What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, I'm man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through this Monster Friday slate. I believe it's the first 15 game slate of the year. I think we've had the 14 gamer. I think we've had like 13 gamers because they've had the weird start times with the other ones. But I don't know if we've had a 15 gamer. So uh, Sheets, is, if this is the time, I'd like to win tonight because it's been a rough, uh, rough go in June so far for me. So I'm ready to uh, to, to, well, to get my I, big I slate thing back. Have, I have I have um, I have some kind of harbinger for you. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. You're going to have to play. Um, you're going to I know you don't like to play the weekend, but you're going to have to play uh, MLB on Sunday to this week. What's happening on Sunday? Well, because I'm going to be flying. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and last time and I'm going to be it's flying true. for like eight hours. And last time I was I was flying for eight for I was flying for, for 16 hours. That's when you cast for like like billions and they like accuse us of multi accounting. I mean, not really. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. That's, right. yeah. that's when we had that issue. I was dealing with from the freaking airport. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. But I'll be cool. flying Sunday. So feel free to put in whatever you want Sunday and, and you'll win. There we go. Okay. I probably will also because it's the, the, we have game, I think game five too is then. So yeah, it should be a big night. There's the, you know, we got it. We've got it. We don't have to wait another million days between games. So there's the basketball game tonight. So it's, it's a huge, huge, huge thing to go to get into um let's uh let's just jump right in whenever you're ready big one gonna, big slate uh, yeah it's gonna it's gonna be there are I've, I've got too many things that I, I definitely need to do some narrowing down at some point let's do it we could we could because i actually have a kind of a a, a a weird opinion about something and i'm really i'm really not happy about it i, I oh, really maybe. want well i want to oh. keep my my takes out of this i wanted to be that numbers guy i didn't want to have to like say oh i saw this in baseball but I, I, unfortunately, I'm just going down that rabbit hole now. So yeah. okay, I'll, I'll tell you I love it. when we get to it. Okay. All right. So let's let's do it. All right. Let's start off with the the first game, which is M Milwaukee and Washington. Um, I think this kid Ashby is pretty good. Uh, you've had I think the second weakest power team in baseball in from the for against lefties in Washington. Uh, it's a big slate. I don't know that I'm going to do this, but I mean, this guy's got 21 strikeouts his last 12 innings, last two starts, uh, good strikeout stuff against this Washington team should be enough to at least be in consideration. So that's where I've got Ashby and Milwaukee as a stack. I understand. I just get a little frustrated when I keep trying to stack against Fetty and it's because he just keeps the ball on the ground. They hit a lot of singles off of him. Hasn't had the, the multi home run game. One thing is you can really run on him for what that's worth. So I guess you could take a shot on some of the, the speedy ish guys, but it's not like we have like an incredible amount of speed over there. So I'm, I'm totally good with, especially Yelich at his price. Um, but I don't know if I really want to fully stack Milwaukee on this slate. Um, it's fine. Uh, I just, am, I'm just sort of back and forth on whether I want to go against Fetty. Just those, these high ground ball pitchers, they just, they just frustrate the hell out of me trying to stack against them. But if you do get to him, you've got a bad bullpen behind him. Um, he does give up hard contact, even with those ground balls. So I, I think they're totally viable. And I think that the Ashby is viable, but they're not, neither of them are my priorities. Yeah. I have Milwaukee as one of the, uh, one of the better stacks. I mean, again, but nothing, nothing, nothing great prices. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, nothing through the roof. They do show up as great values. Um, and the thing is that Fetty is kind of like that, 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 that name that everybody always stacks against, you know? right. Um, he was used to be the uh, used to be the Martin Perez, right? Right, right. Um, until um, everybody hopefully learned their lesson. Um, but Fetty's not in contention with Cy Young um, by any time soon. Mm -hmm. I don't imagine. Um, and if Milwaukee ends up being really high owned, for example, um, mm -hmm. I don't think they will be, but maybe. I mean, like you said, they are cheap, and you got Yelich. What's his price? He under was he four K? I mean, kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy. But um, yeah, go so ahead. that looks okay. And I agree with you. I think Ashby's kind of a fringe play on this lane. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, prioritizing him. I, I'm probably going to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But if you get if you get to him, I think it's totally reasonable. Yeah, I'm on the same same page same page here. Um, all right, let's jump over to uh, Arizona and Philly. Um, this is an interesting one because I do think that that Gibson has some some signs that are alarming and then also some that i think he's actually getting a little bit unlucky uh what i like about him is that he's usually historically been pretty good with his control he's had a couple of bad outings this year so his control's gotten a little bit off uh the strikeout upside is not that exciting but 7100 on where i want to stack some some more expensive teams 
I'm just going to mention him. I'm not necessarily going to do anything with him. He also struggles against lefties. You're going to have probably seven lefties in the lineup against him today. Um, I certainly don't, I, I don't think I want to stack Arizona. I don't mind some of these, these, you know, cheapish plays, Pavin Smith, David Peralta. And then I think Varsho is always a strong play, but I don't know. I, I'm sort of on, on this giant slate, tempted to stay away from this one. I'm not going to play Gallon uh, against Philly, and I'm not interested in Philly, particularly against Gallon. So that's where I'm at on this one. I'm not that interested in Philly against Gallon either. I'm not interested in Gallon against Philly. I do have a little bit of interest in Kyle Gibson at 7,100, though. Yep. Um, uh, kind of as, as, a, as a cheap OSP2. Um, and on a big slate, I mean, the fact they have him rated one through like sixth or something or seven, that's pretty strong. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, I actually think it's, he's not bad actually. So I, I'll, I'll recommend Gibson here and none of the hitting. Yep. Um, I think that that's, that's basically where I am. I'm just going to decide whether I want to do the Gibson thing later on, because there's a couple other guys that are going to be some, some weird names, but I, guys who I want to take some chances with. So um, that are also cheap. So anyway, uh, let's jump over to your Yankees and the Cubs. Always exciting to see the Cubs, both for your pitcher and usually for your hitters. Wade Miley, though, is one of those guys, right? Like he is absolutely a guy who for years people tried to pick on and then he would go out there and just throw these monster, monster games out there. I, I, I obviously like the Yankees. It's good hitting weather out there. Uh, you got wind blowing out. It's it's just the pricing is going to make them hard, which is what has me interested. And I'm a little worried that Miley tends to always be a little better than we give him credit for. Uh, Severino, I think, is the obvious, you know, natural cash game SP1. But I don't think that you like, I don't know if, if you need to say. Do, like, do you like him better than Musgrove? I'm debating on that one. Okay. Um, but I, I do have Severino right now as one of the top pitchers. And it's mostly just because of the matchup. And, or a lot less, sorry, a lot because of the matchup. And also he's been really, really good. High, high K rate, the low walk rate um, hasn't really been roughed up. So I, I do, I do think this is a good spot to take some Severino chances and, and play, uh, play some Yankees against Miley, specifically judge, uh, and Stanton it's Josh Donaldson. I don't know what, what he did or, or to get his price this high. Um, he's not been the same Josh Donaldson, but always used to be very, very good against lefties. LeMay, he was reasonably priced. So I, I could see a Yankee stack here making some sense. How about you? Well, yeah, I mean, they score 100 runs a game. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's really nice here in New York today. Um, yeah. I have the, I have them rated just, you know, as, as the second, as far as just raw numbers, second tied with Atlanta for second, as far as just number mm -hmm. of points. Um, I got I got no problem doing this. I mean, every time I think, well, maybe this is the one I'm not gonna play the Yankees. Next thing you know, you know, whoop, judge home run, whoop, home run. This, I mean, like they they, yep. they just, I mean, did they did they end up winning yesterday? They probably ended up winning. Yeah, they they want to think like ten to seven or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Cole's like, you know, I don't know. I'm not gonna get a loss. I mean, whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I have no problem trying to play the Yankees. And Severino, yeah, I have him as one of the um, you know uh, one of the one of the top pitchers on the slate as well. Um, if, I don't know who's going to be the most popular, but I don't think he's somebody I have to play. I mean, if that's the case, so mm -hmm. we'll talk about some other guys. Yeah. I think, I think that he's going to probably be in that middle-ish range that, that around 30% for pitchers probably, um, at first look, but we'll see. Um, I, okay. So here's one Oakland and Cleveland. Um, I'm very high on McKenzie. I'm on McKenzie in general. I like the matchup. It's interesting that his strikeouts haven't been quite as good as he's honestly, as he's been being projected for today, he's got a six and a half K prop and he's only hit over six strikeouts in two of his 10 starts. Um, but it's the, it's the A's. Um, and I feel pretty comfortable if we, especially if we get a reasonable pitchers umpire here that I can, I can play McKenzie and, I think he's got a chance to be one of the highest scoring players in the slate. And you wish he was a little cheaper, but can't have everything. So McKenzie and as I always say, Jose Ramirez as a one-off would be definitely, I, I would not mind that or even a little two-man with like Naylor and, and Ramirez, but um, mostly it's McKenzie for me here. 
Yeah, uh, I, I think I think McKenzie's a really really strong play today. Today, um, he's, he's he's got upside. He's got a good matchup. He's cheap enough. Um, I have him right now at only about fifteen percent ownership or so. Um, but uh, I like I like that a lot actually. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not getting to any of the hitting in this game, so for me, it's just McKenzie or 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 nothing. Yep. Um, all right. So let's talk about the, uh, this is a spot where I'm going to be probably the highest on, uh, Barrios is, I think just an awesome play at 7,500. Uh, he's given us some signs that he's actually back to himself with a, a great outing at 13 strikeouts against his former team last time out. And, uh, I think he's a really, really good play at 7,500. I don't know why he's 7,500. He's had a couple bad starts this year, but Mostly, I mean, even at 20, even 20 fantasy points at 7,500 is, is reasonable. And, and I, and I currently have Toronto as number one of the obvious stacks uh, going to be hard to get them in because of the pricing. So I think they're a terrific stack. Just, just going to be difficult with the pricing. That's where I've got Toronto. Yeah. I have them rated number one uh, as far as, uh, you know, hitting options. And I think you could pay, you could pay down for pitching to get there if you want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I also, uh, have Barrios rated as one of my top pitchers as well. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm with you. Uh, yeah. uh, now which, which Rodriguez is this for Detroit? They have a couple, right? Elvin Rodriguez. He's yeah. This is the, this is the non Erod. Yeah. He's really struggled. And, um, I, I don't, I don't think this is an ideal situation for a guy who, it's coming off of a, 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 you don't see that very often where a guy gives up 10 earned runs in a game. And uh, he gave up, he had four home runs allowed his last time out against the Yankees and it's the Yankees. But again, this is the blue Jays. So I am, uh, I'm definitely high on the side. Also he gets wild. I, I could just see this being this, this is the kind of game that could go off completely for, for Toronto. So I'm, I'm very high on Toronto here. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any empire data No, Yeah. So Toronto, I definitely have his number one at the moment. Um, all right, let's move over to Pittsburgh because you mentioned that I'm sorry to Atlanta. So this is good hitting weather in Atlanta. I think that both of these pitchers are strongly in play and I think Strider is going to be really popular. Uh, I might be a little bit higher on Contreras than I am Strider. Atlanta with all of their stuff, they strike out a ton. Um, we've seen, we've seen upside out of Contreras so far. I mean, he's, he's been solid and all of his, out. I, I mean, again, I wish he was like in the, in the lo- upper fives or lower sixes or something like that, but I definitely don't mind taking a shot here with a guy with high strikeout upside against his Atlanta team who they've never seen before. So I, uh, I'm open to both sides of this one for what it's worth. Strider has the same strikeout prop as like Severino and these guys, he hasn't pitched into the fifth inning yet and he wasn't uh so for him to be that that owned is a little bit alarming but they did let him throw 87 pitches his last outing and it was in Colorado so you can for, forgive that he also had five walks in that game so control is can, is can be an issue for him but he's mostly been pitching out of the the bullpen or or in short starts this season I think he's a little bit stretched out now and I think that both these guys are really good options I am not as high on the Atlanta side as other people will be now, if you get past Contreras and you have a terrible bullpen behind you, sh- sure, I could definitely see Atlanta being something. Their prices on DK are, are just kind of tough to, to make work, and I just don't like them as much as the spend-ups from Toronto and New York right now. So I've um, – unf- I don't know why, but I've fortunately or unfortunately seen way too many games of Spencer Strider this year. Um, really? I don't know why I, I I'm either. And, and, and it started with me watching him out of the bullpen. I was, I, I think I might've had forgot who I had. It must've been against Philly or something. I don't know, but he came in out of the bullpen and, and he, he's, he's kind of a weird looking pitcher type. And he's like a little mustache. He's like, he looks like a guy that's like, that's just like kind of some middle reliever guy, you know, that you've never heard of. That's mm-hmm. what he looks like. It's like those guys that, you don't hear of the whole season and then like the playoffs and, and, and the world series comes and Tampa throws in all these guys that nobody knows. And they never, they never give up anything. You know what I mean? Like, right. Right. It felt like one of those guys coming in and the guy throws it a million miles an hour. Okay. Yep. Throws it a hundred. And he actually has a, 
a little a kind of a change up also a little bit. But the thing I was going to mention is, and remember, I was I was sweating, so I was rooting. It it just it just seems as though he was just a guy that just kind of just threw hard, you know that 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 people could get after uh, if they got a chance to see him a couple of times. So I I'm not a big fan of him as as a, as a as a starter. Um, uh, and I'm not surprised that, you know, he, 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 you know, he had the five walks in the last game, whatever it is. He does have a high strikeout rate. Crazy high remember, strikeout rate. Yeah. Remember high strikeout rate is different than being able to maintain that over like five innings when this, they see you a couple of times, you know, also, you know, mm-hmm. if you come in for one inning that they're like, who's this guy come? Whoa, that's hundred. Yeah, next thing you know, you struck out. You know, you're getting, you're getting, it's, it's, right. as opposed to now, now they're facing him, they're watching him, they're scouting him a little bit before, and now they get a couple of trips through the lineup. Maybe uh, if, if, if Spencer Strider becomes like the, like the chalk somehow du jour because of the strikeout rate, um, I'm probably going to fade him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's showing up for me is actually just the pure, pure you know, disclosure, the top point per dollar play on the slate right now. Right. right. And, and I, there's a reason for that. Like you, you, you input a strikeout rate of 36% or whatever. Right. He's just going to pop, you know, um, especially against Pittsburgh, I, yeah. especially against Pittsburgh. Right. But I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the industry. I'm going to watch, you know, like I said, the industry flow of information and the industry flow of takes. And let's just, let's just see if Spencer Strider doesn't come out like real chalky, because if he does, I might, I might say, you know, I just rather just have Tristan McKenzie or something like that. Um, or, maybe or you play, could go on the other side and consider Contreras. Well, and that's you. the thing I think I, I I didn't really see him in my projections too much, so that's why I want to ask you a little bit about him. So he's he's had a couple of good results. He's a good prospect. He he has a good strikeout rate. Is that is that? Yeah, him? yeah, okay. and he's um he's been solid so far, and I think he's a really a, a very reasonable option. I mean, he's coming off his best outing of the year with uh, eight strikeouts against Arizona and five and two thirds. It's Arizona, but at the same time, Atlanta strikes out as well. And I think this is a really interesting spot for a team that has never seen him before. So you have a, your direct pivot to me right off of sure is. Strider right, right there. And you could play. And it's direct like, pivot off of Atlanta ownership. Absolutely. And then you could also, I, although I don't think that's the one thing that's keeping me a little bit interested in Atlanta is I just don't see how they're going to be that popular at these prices. It's almost is, impossible. Is Acuna like 7K yet or something like this? What's that? Yeah, Acuna's 62, Riley's 58, Swanson's 55, Darno's oh 53, Olsen's 52. Like there's just really not, right. you don't get a break in the pricing until you get down to the sixth spot and yeah, even then it's not. 46 and 43. So maybe more of a fan duel play if you're going to take that shot. I do like to attacking bad teams. So always interested in attacking Pittsburgh. Um, if, if you can get past Contreras and I'm not saying this guy's like the next coming of anything. I'm just think that he's a, a good enough pitcher who could, who has enough of a K rate to, to be, to be worthwhile here. And maybe you play him with Barrios instead of Strider with Barrios just as an option. Um, all right. Uh, Texas and Chicago. What do you got for me here? Um, am I supposed to have anything? Cause I don't, uh, I, I don't have either. <laughs> I don't have either hitting, whether I'm ranking them by raw points or value. I don't have either pitcher. Um, instinctively, I guess you could play. I don't know. Otto? I don't know. I really don't have much of an opinion on this team. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so, like, Simeon has finally caught fire, which we've been waiting for all season long, and he's running every time he's on base. I think he's one of the best one-offs on the slate. The problem is he's a little expensive now. Um, but these pitchers, both you can run on both of them, and they give up enough power, and it's enough it's enough good hitting weather to where I'm I'm mildly interested in both sides of it. Um, you do have the White Sox off of a huge scoring game yesterday against the Dodgers. Um, I, I'm open to it. I I, 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 and I they're a little bit further behind the other stacks for me, but I certainly don't mind this whole both sides of this game. And, it, you know, maybe one of those things, if we get one of the, the, the extreme hitters umpires, maybe it'll sway me enough to where I really do want to stack this game. Because I think you have enough guys with the speed power upside, especially Simeon stands out for me, um, Luis Robert. And uh, then there's just enough, you know, you have a good catch, good hitting catcher in Garver. Uh, Abreu's cheap, although he's been really bad against righties this year. The whole White Sox have been really bad against righties all year long, but that can't last forever. And you have some cheap options with guys like Cole Calhoun. So, there's a lot of pieces of this game that I might be revisiting when I go live at six, because I I'm definitely open to it, but I don't feel 
real strong conviction about it. Uh, all right, let's talk about Tampa Bay and Minnesota. I this is the it looks to me like the best hitting weather on the slate. Um, oh no, it's it just just it's just it's warm in Minnesota, and, and when it's warm there, the ball the ball carries. So, or one of the better hitting weathers on the slate, I should say. I am into your raise a little bit. Um, nope. I think that you've got the cheapo in, in Bruhan. You've got Harold Ramirez at, at 2,400. You could do a very, very cheap, at least a complimentary stack. So I actually have Tampa Bay as a team that I'm definitely going to target. And I never mind, you know, Buxton, especially at, at this price, which again, coming off of a monster game, we know Buxton's streaky also. Um, I don't really want to attack Rasmussen in a good bullpen, but I don't think it's like terribly wrong to either. So I, I'm much more on the the race side of this, but, and it's a lot pricing and hitting conditions in that Smelter is just, you know, just a guy to me. Um, so I, I kind of like the race here a little bit. That's where I'm at. I have Tampa Ray as a, a pretty good value here as, uh, as well. Um, and the fact that they're, like you said, going to be in good hitting weather uh, makes that even a better play. Uh, Rasmussen is not showing up for me at 9,400, um, nor is Minnesota. Um, maybe we're supposed to play Minnesota though, if, if, the, if the weather's that good, but I don't like playing teams. Um, forget, forget that they did, they did a number on Cole yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always, again, had this, this weird, this weird theory that, that teams playing the game after like against the big fireballer, right. Just have just kind of struggle. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I've never, of course, never actually proved that, but it's just kind of instinct. So unless they are really showing up as a really strong play, I'm probably going to avoid Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I'll, I, I might join you in, uh, my, my tip of my, uh, my, my daily Tampa stack, <laughs> which only seems to show up, mm -hmm. um, and neither pitcher. Yeah. I think that, I mean, even, even as a mini for Tampa, whether you want to go mini or full stack, it's, it's hard for me to always on a big slate, a 15 gamer to take a lineup that doesn't really have like a ton of power, but you've got some, I mean, you could make a nice little three or four man. And I just think that they're so cheap. It's just hard for me not to have some interest. Yep. Um, Baltimore at KC. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. go, let's do uh, Miami oh, Houston first. I'm sorry. I jumped. I jumped. Um, Miami Houston. This is the probably just a stay away from me. I don't mind Luis Garcia. Um, I don't know exactly where to go with this because I feel like I'm tempted to, I'm always tempted to play the, the unowned Pablo Lopez. I think he's a good real life pitcher. I think he's good against good hitters. So I don't mind him as much, but I just think it's probably the wrong kind of a slate. I think Garcia is more viable, but I, I'm just probably not going to play either of these guys, to be honest. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm now, I'm now going to whine, um, but I'm, I'm basically whining to myself. So I was really hoping at some point that either Luis Garcia from the from the Nationals or Luis Garcia from the Astros would be out of the league because it, they're they're driving me bananas in my <laughs> okay. Um, I still haven't figured out the best way to handle this yet. So whenever Luis Garcia is pitching and Luis Garcia for Houston and Luis Garcia is also hitting for Washington. Mm -hmm. The way my models just kind of put these things together, I end up with Luis Garcia, the second baseman, being locked in in every lineup because he's getting <laughs> Luis Garcia, the pitcher's projection. Um, and so I have to figure this out. I had to do this. Um, uh, I'm, and, and what ends up happening is Luis Garcia, the pitcher, ends up with kind of not a, even a projection at all. So I have to then manually check and see if he's a good player or not. Um, we'll fi I'll figure that out by lock tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that Luis Garcia is not some smash play. Um, cause I might just miss him. Uh, we'll, we'll, but we'll, we'll get, take another look at that. I mean, well, let's listen here's home against Miami. Um, actually being home against Miami doesn't mean anything since he's home at Houston, which is a better hitting worse for pitchers than Miami anyway. Um, yeah, still, still we'll pretty good again. I'm looking at it again, but I really currently don't have anything for Luis Garcia. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to to the ninety one hundred for a pitcher who's only thrown ninety one pitches once this season, and that's his high. That's what worries me is that he just doesn't have that leash that some of the other guys do. Like, yeah, do I expect him most of the time to probably have a better outing than McKenzie here? I think so, 
but I don't think that his upside is anywhere near what McKenzie's is. So uh, that's where I'm sort of struggling. And, and there, you know, you get also the $300 discount or whatever on McKenzie. And McKenzie can throw 100 plus pitches. And that, that wouldn't surprise me at all, where I don't think that's ever going to happen with Garcia. Hey, so, so yesterday we talked about um, the KC Baltimore game being kind of the natural pivot that was going to be chalky. I didn't like check the ownerships at the end of the day. I know that the, the, the game kind of, kind of performed. I mean, the mm -hmm. seven, five game, did people end up playing these? Games? Oh, that's right. You didn't really play that much. You might not even know. I, didn't I don't know how that. much they ended up going with it, but seeing some of the ownership in the other games, I can't see that it could have been crazy owned. Right. Um, right. But it does seem like a, you know, an, a decent -ish spot, uh, yeah. especially for Baltimore, I think. Um, uh, I'm open to both of these teams, but neither of them like are screaming, you know, I need to play them or anything, but I, I, I could definitely make a good case. I feel like for both sides. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't, I don't feel on a 15 game slate. It's not the first thing I want to do, but I definitely am okay with it. It's, you do have some wind blowing in from left field. So maybe the lefties would get a little bit of an edge over the righties in this game. Yep. Um, it is, oh, actually, you know what? Never mind. The wind's going to be pretty, pretty non existent. Um, but it is almost 80 degrees. And when, again, KC is another place where, you know, when, they, when it's warm, it plays a lot better of a hitter's park than people think. So I'm open to it, but I don't have a strong conviction. I, I, I feel very similar about this game the way I do to Texas and Chicago, uh, where I could see myself by the end of the day fully game stacking it. But as of right now, they're not priorities for me. Yeah, I'm kind of a little bit further along than you are on this one. I, I'm I'm already at the point where I think I might want to play this play these guys, mm -hmm. uh, and I might consider game stacking these two. I, I I look at them the same today as I did yesterday, except you're competing with a sh you know s load more teams than mm -hmm. yesterday, right? Um, but I, I think they're both they're both kind of fringy decent plays, and if you get a good umpire, for example. Um, uh, for 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 hitting, I I would I would I would go for something like that. I would uh, I might do a game stack in a game like this. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's totally reasonable. I mean, low strikeout pitchers, hot weather. Um, looks like it's a neutral lump, basically, from what I'm looking at now. Um, but yeah, I could I could get behind it. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna do here with uh, Luis. Okay, so. What, what's, tell me your thoughts on the Cincinnati. Well, before, before we get into this, listen, we, we, we stopped betting our dollars on things or whatever when we, we disagreed on something. Yeah. But, but, but I, I have, I have, I have to, uh, I don't want to say send you a dollar. Not that I disagree with you on something because I, I did, because uh, I played it for leverage and things like that. But I would just like to give a little bit of, of shout out, even though the pitcher was high owned and even though I was playing for leverage, something like that. You know, the other day, Shane McClanahan was pitching against the Cardinals mm -hmm. and and Bobby came on and said, Shane McClanahan, I want to I don't know why anybody would fade him. He's like the best fantasy producer ever. I don't care who these freaking Cardinals righties are. And I came on and said, listen, I don't care what you're saying. I mean, it's a four game slate. I am playing all these freaking righty Cardinals. I mean, come and get me. And he and what he did to these freaking Cardinals should be freaking criminalized. I mean, oh my god, he was unbelievable. He had 38 fantasy points like in a tuxedo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like <laughs> crazy, right? So I when I see these Cardinals righties, uh, Cardinals, I'm like, okay, let's, let's cool your jets or just a minute here. Um, <laughs> so so now you have Castillo against the Cardinal righties. Um, although Castillo's a righty. Um, I'm not getting to him, um, which is a little concerning to me because I you like to play him sometimes. Um, so I'm waiting to hear, get your opinion on this. And it's almost as if this game doesn't exist on my board. Like I have no, no hitters, no pitchers, just a total cross off. But I have this weird feeling I'm supposed to involve Castillo in my pitchers mix. There's enough pitchers where I don't know if you need to against a low strikeout team, but I, I just, I, I think you want to talk about upside and a guy with a leash. It's a little worrisome that he's, I mean, he's thrown in his last two starts, he's thrown 211 pitches which doesn't mean that they're going to like limit him or anything today. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I against them because the Cardinals are, are such a low strikeout team. I, I still think Castillo, like, I mean, Boston's a fairly low team as well. And, and Castillo struck out 13 of them. So I I'm, I'm iffy on Castillo, but it does, it feels weird. Even though I love McKinsey, it feels weird to, to, to like McKinsey and talk about Ashby and then sort of, sort of like just, okay, we're not going to play Castillo because he's playing the Cardinals. So I, I am open to, to Castillo here. And uh, I think he's, he's really started to find himself a little bit the last few starts. So 
Um, but I, again, he's not, it's not a priority for me. I still have Ken, McKenzie rated ahead of him because of the matchup, but that's all I'm doing in this game anyway. I don't play Cincinnati outside of Cincinnati. What do you think about the Mets and Angels? Nothing. I mean, McGill is going to probably play pitch four innings. Right. I mean, at most. I'm just guessing. But we're not, whatever. I mean, like he's not going to be given full, full leech. Full leash and he's 9,700, so I'm not interested in that. I don't know. This, I guess Diaz is a bullpen guy, so no, none of the pitchers. And I'm not getting the, any of the hitting either. So you, you like anything here? Feels like that there should be some interest in the Mets. Um, but I want to see who's playing for them because we've seen a lot of scratches. And as of their, their current lineup stands, without Marte and Alonzo, it's not all that appealing to play these guys. However, you do get a lot of cheap options in there batting in spots where you want them. And, you know, J.D. Davis is batting probably clean up today at 2,900. Um, Mark Canna batting second at 3,300. Uh, you know, these are against lefties. Uh, lefty, so, again, who knows? And Diaz may not stick around all that long. But I, I'm open to at least, like, maybe using some of the value. But I don't think I'm going to prioritize the Mets as a stack. It's especially if, if Alonzo and Marte are playing, then we'll, I'll, I'll revisit it because uh, this is, I mean, this Mets lineup when those guys are in are, is, is very strong. It's nice hitting weather. Finally in the, in LA, you know, 75 degrees, nine mile an hour blown out to left center. So it's, it just depends on that for me. Otherwise I could see a canna Davis cheap, you know, double cheap thing to try and make a lineup work, maybe throw an Escobar as a three man, but that's pretty much all I would be considering doing in this one. So we have, right. so so Colorado San Diego before before we we talk about Musgrove and, and San Diego and all this stuff I just I just like to again reiterate you know I don't know where Colorado I, listen Colorado obviously is a struggling organization I guess right whatever but how do they pick up Chad Cool and the guy never gives up a freaking run it at home in Colorado. How do they find? How how does that happen? You know how do they, how, they see something with him where 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 he, they think that he could pitch in Colorado? I, coming out of Pittsburgh, I have no idea. But he uh, just to reiterate, uh, he you know they were he went against the Braves in his last start, and every single Brave was eighty percent owned, and every one of them was way too cheap, and nobody could touch him. It was yep. amazing. They went to extra innings at zero zero. Uh, just just awesome. Uh, nonetheless, I do, have, do not have any interest in Chad Cole. Um, and Musgrove is projecting for me to be the best, over, you know, the best, uh, the best Thank play. You. I have him better than Severino. Um, I have him also much higher owned than Severino, um, at least to start off with. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of a dreamy matchup. <laughs> I mean, like uh, Colorado on the road. So uh, uh, I'm not going to talk anybody off of it. Um, and hitting wise, I'm actually getting to San Diego as, um, mm -hmm. as, a, as decent value here as well. So, so Musgrove, San Diego and, uh, you know, eight, nothing final, something like that. That's, that's kind I of, could, I could see that happening. Um, I, I have Musgrove a little bit behind Severino, um, less of a strikeout pitcher, yep. uh, in the inner division game, et cetera. You know what I mean? Just things like that. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's good. <laughs> like 10, five feels like a lot. Uh, Severino, I had never minded as much because he just, you know, he can, he can always put up that 35 Musgrove. It's a little harder for him to get there. Uh, also Musgrove, you know, with a less Musgrove has a lower K prop than Strider does, you know, it's always weird for me to play a guy at 3,500. So weird, huh? Yeah. So it's a little, little strange. Can I bet that that? It's it's weird. Um, can, I bet, can I can I bet Musgrove over Strider? Yeah, probably. Up on prize picks? I mean, probably. Yeah, but I don't know that that's even the the right bet. Like, I don't know either. I'm just asking if I can bet it. I, I don't know. I think I think they probably will have something like that on Prize Picks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Musgrove is he's a very good pitcher. Uh, is he's been consistently just very very good. Nothing that would scream ten five exactly, but. The consistent, like I feel like you're paying for consistency by playing Musgrove at this point, and you're not really paying for upside. And I would rather pay for upside if I was if it's me. So that's why I have Musgrove a little bit below. Fair enough. 
Um, but I do like San Diego as well. Uh, I don't know that I need a full stack, but I, I certainly think there's some value. I mean, people probably don't realize this, but Profar has been a very good fantasy producer this year okay. and has been absolutely on fire lately. Um, you have Profar, you get Luke Voigt at 2,600, and I don't care if how, how many games he goes. I, I just, the guy legitimately, I mean, he actually hit, one, hit a home run a few days ago. But um, he's just got immense power, and it's always interesting to me. So I like specifically Voight, uh, Profar. It, if they somehow ever move Grisham up, and if not, I, like, I think Mazzara at minimum cost. So I could get, get a San Diego stack as a value. I have them as, as one of my priority value stacks along the lines of a Tampa Bay or Milwaukee. That's They're right there with those guys for me. I will add in Hosmer and Cronenworth to the uh, – Yeah. Oh, fair enough, yeah. To the mix. The only problem with me with Hosmer is that I'm always playing Voight. <laughs> so, um, all right, Boston and Seattle. Um, this game feels very cross-offish to me. Um, I actually think there's an argument for Seattle. I am not going to play. I don't like paying for Boston on the road. Um, I, I'll go back to the fact, though, that Marcus Gonzalez has, Marco Gonzalez has started up. Start, it's weird because he's become a slightly better pitcher in real life and he's done it, but he's by giving up more home runs. It's very, you know, just what happens sometimes. Guys change their stuff a little bit. He's been a solid uh, in real life and hasn't really just looking. He hasn't really been messed around too much. He had that one bad outing against Oakland. Other than that, less than three earned runs in all of his starts this season, most of them being quality starts. Um, so I'm, I'm basically off of this game, except for I'm sort of flirting with the idea. Like I could see an argument being made for Rich Hill or for Seattle. Uh, Rich Hill has sort of been all over the map uh, these days, and he doesn't always last very long. Seattle, we've seen them have some sneaky big games, and I like their lineup. The problem is it's just really hard to get to afford them. So I think if you do play Seattle, you probably have to do it on FanDuel because you've got, I mean, you've got some guys who are really good against lefties, like, uh, Rodriguez, Suarez, uh, Suarez and France, but they're, they're 55, 51 and 45, which is just a little bit more than you'd want to pay for these guys. So I, I think I can get to a stack of, of Seattle on FanDuel, but I don't think I could do it on DraftKings. How about you? I don't know. Can you, can I, can I talk you into Gonzalez or no? Ooh, interesting. I hadn't really thought that far into it. I guess at 6,500, you know, it's, Kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, the innings are there, right? Like he's in, and he, you know, he's a, yeah, I, I, it wasn't I, too long I, ago. We were worried about fading in this chalk. You know what I mean? Like, and then, yeah, it's just the Boston and maybe it's the Boston name value because we've seen Boston not have uh, who did they sit the other day it was Bogarts and, and we have no uh, Kike. So I think Bogarts will play today, but Kike is out still. And that's one of their better lefty guys against lefties. Yeah, I think I could maybe get behind this um, this Marco idea. It's a, it feels a little funny on a big slate, but I, at sixty five hundred, I think that's I think that's reasonable. So I I will mar mark down Marco. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up with him, but I think that that's actually interesting. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't mind it. I mean, I, I again, this is this is like a, another universe, right? But I mean, he came into the season. I mean, kind of high hopes. I mean, the second game of the season, he's he's ninety three hundred against against the Astros, and and. Uh, <laughs> And he actually like put put up the numbers. <laughs> yeah. And he's obviously he's had some struggles, but I mean, I don't know. Just for sixty five hundred, I figure I don't know. And, if he's, and to be fair, he's not really showing up in my projections. I'm just I'm literally just staring at this as, as I'm kind of just just breezing through here, and I'm like, okay, um, six yeah. sixty five hundred. He's not bad, and I'll try it. That's really really yeah. my my analysis. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I think he's actually a good pitcher. I just think the problem is that he doesn't strike people out enough. Um, but at 6,500, if you can get 18 or 20 fantasy points, you're probably in decent shape. And he's yet another pivot off of the, the Strider guy. Um, and he definitely has the leash that Strider doesn't have. So uh, I, think, I think it's kind of an interesting call by you. Um, I, okay, so here I have a question. What is going on with your man over here? He's been he's been terrible. Um. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you, but it kind of the fact that everybody thinks that he's just like so bad now has to be like a little bit interested. Like, I don't know if I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, I just can't buy that. He's actually as bad as he's pitched. And I, I that's, that's all I got. I, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on though. Um, he definitely has looked off 
this is a guy who does not give up home runs. He's given up four in the last two games. He got roughed up by the Mets in the last outing. Uh, had a str- struggled against Pittsburgh. Actually pitched well most of that game against Pittsburgh the game before. Got a little bit unlucky with the Babip stuff. And uh, pitched, pitched well against Washington, but didn't strike anybody out. He's just not striking anybody out. And it's really hard to play a guy at 9,800 who's not striking anybody out. He has a four and a half K prop, which I would have laughed at like three weeks ago. And now it seems like fair. <laughs> what is, uh, what's the weather there? It's a little bit warmer than it has been. So, you know, which is not saying much. It's New York. It's San Francisco in the summer, 67 degrees. Um, the unmeaningful wind blowing out. Because um, I don't know. I kind of I, I, I kind of feel like playing the Dodgers. I, I, I agree, actually. Um, the only thing that you're going to get is like when you play a regular season game, if it's not the Dodgers at the Giants or the first of a series, especially, especially the first game of a series with these guys, because there's so much energy and there's like, that's that it's, 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 the, it's, the, it, it's it, to us, it's no different than for a regular season games than, than the Yankees and, and Red Sox. I know that there's more history and all that stuff, but we really do feel the same way. And the Dodgers and Giants, you're going to get the best effort from the Giants. The Giants, if June, if Eunice is struggling, you're going to, you're going to get all of the best guys for one inning. So it's going to be tough to, you know, tough in that respect. But the low owned Dodgers, I mean, sure, I'll, I'll take it. And, and this is a team, the Dodgers, you know, who've had some huge out, outings before in San Francisco. I mean, I, I remember a, a 20 run outing. I remember 17 one, I think from last year. Th- there is definitely the upside to win a tournament. And Eunice is just a guy. He's just, I mean, he's an adequate pitcher is how I would describe him. And he gives up some power, uh, mostly pretty good with his control. If he loses any of it, you're, he's in real trouble against this team. So, I'm, I'm interested in the Dodgers a little yeah, bit. I'm, I don't I'm think I'm allowed, to, I'm allowed to play Cody Bellinger against a variety of 3,900, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You could play. I'm allowed to play Freddie Freeman every, every, you know, at 5K every day. Everybody, right? Yep. Mookie yeah. has been, I mean, other than the fact that he didn't do anything yesterday and everybody was complaining, what's wrong with Mookie? What's wrong with Mookie? He has three bad games. Uh, what's wrong with Mookie is that baseball is a game of high variance. <laughs> and if a guy's hitting 320 for the season and leads the league in home runs, and he doesn't hit a home run for four days. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with him. He just didn't happen to have a big game yesterday and the day before. Um, and, then, and there's Gavin Lux going four for four yesterday. Yep. Yep. Gavin Lux, one of the be- better nine hitters you'll ever see. Um, I'll put him instead of Muncie and then we can, you know, then we can. Uh, I'd be careful. I have a feeling Muncie's about to go on a tear. Yeah, but I'm, I'll save 1900. Yeah, no, it's a big difference in price, obviously. I'm just saying though, I've got to, I, I, when Muncie came back from the injury I, and all the reports are that he's just been like this, just, just in his swing and everything that it looks, it looked perfect in practice and all these things. This is like the little Dodger stuff that they say, of course, it sounds good after you go two for five and hit a monstrous home run. Right. But, um, but I, I do think Muncie's going to turn it, you know, get back to himself. I, I can totally get behind the Dodgers stack. I actually think that they make more sense than a lot of these other teams that, that I've been trying to fiddle with. Um, but I have a pretty clear, small, like I have a bunch of, of medium interesting stacks. I think my favorite two would probably be the Yankees in Toronto. Toronto yeah. being number one yeah. pretty clearly. But the Yankees do worry me also because, like I said, Miley can just be tricky. And he's a perfect example of a guy. He's got tricks uh, type of a guy. Yeah. And I love the Milwaukee value, the Tampa Bay value, and the San Diego value as a, either a mini stack or a four-man stack more than I do a full five-man um, because if I was going to prioritize a five man, it's really hard for me to, to pick up over those guys over Toronto, the Yankees, and then, and then even the Dodgers. Now, I don't know if we ever talked about the actual plays for, um, Toronto in that, um, Oh, Toronto. Okay. I'll, that's a, that's an easy one. It's, are we going to get BGO in the 2400? I think he'll probably play today. So that'll help the thing that will help you out a little bit. Um, BGO and Tapia are going to be the only cheap ones. Okay. But I think that the Toronto is going to make you have to force force you into that seven K ish range. You know what I mean? Like be, for pitchers because they're they are. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm right now looking at at a, at a Mackenzie Barrios pairing, so mm-hmm. I can play wherever I want, pretty much. Kind of, but it's going to be hard maybe not you. exactly who I want. That's Toronto's got everybody's at five. Everybody's over five K except for Espinal, Chapman, Tapia, and Biggio. That's true. So you have I, five I, well, I like Espinal, by the way. I do too. I, I think he's, oh, I think he's, he's even he's 4,400. I know there, there's no real cheapies except for the Biggio thing. So you got to hope for the, hope, hope I, for the I, Biggio. I, I guess, I guess it's going to be then. Uh, there's, there's your strider. I guess or, it's going to be Barrios and Marcos Gonzalez. Then, I guess. Marco Gonzalez. There you go. Yeah. That, now you'll have the money to do it. 
That works. Not even. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can do it though, because you could because there's yeah. enough value bats you can play elsewhere. Yeah, but yeah that's some of those San Diego guys. Something like that is is what I'd be looking at. And also, I like the idea of playing Barrios with Toronto, also because as we know, yeah. it's great when you have the you're, you're pitching with the lead and you're betting on that to be the case. So yeah. I like all that. Uh, sheets. Oh, uh, so my pitchers in order though are. So for the spend ups, Severino, Musgrove, for everybody else, uh, McKenzie, McKenzie in the middle, and then Contreras or Strider are my priorities with some Gibson, some Gibson consideration, some Castillo consideration, some Marco Gonzalez consideration. That's where I'm at right now. What, what a, is this Barrios? Does this Barrios play um, bother you just as coming off that big performance? It doesn't really bother you. Huh? Well, he wasn't. Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me like crazy. I'm gonna double check and see if there's nothing I'm missing from that in terms of a bizarre number of pitches or anything. It's a good matchup. Um, yeah, I mean, he only I threw mean, ninety. I mean, I was, look, 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 he's cheap. So I mean, it's it's whatever. And he only threw ninety pitches in his Detroit. I mean, I actually think if he's not like forty percent owned, that's probably like a mistake. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. I mean, I just think he's like he's he's. He should get 20 here, like a huge portion of the time. Um, right. And, and I think, I, I mean, throw away his first couple starts and then, you know, any bad outing a pitcher has where they give up, just get rocked in one outing. No, that, that never bothers me. And that's, he's had that happen a couple times this season. Um, but his last four starts has been much better and, or actually had, a, had a, no one time, but he was sort of ramping up those first two games, sort of seemed like he was trying to find himself and really, really looked good in his last four, four outings, even though, the numbers aren't incredible. I think, I just think it's a good enough spot, but yeah, I mean, it should be a little bit, it should be a little concerning um, in general, but 90 pitches and 13 strikeouts. That's actually kind of incredible. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Anything else before we get out of here? Yeah, I guess I'll rank my stuff again. This is just yeah. your point per dollar stuff, but, but Strider, then uh, Musgrove, Barrios, McKenzie, then I have Severino Gibson just below them. And then again, Gonzalez is my, just, I can't support it with any, actual data but mm-hmm. i just kind of like it um and as far as uh stacks go uh you know toronto yankees braves if you can get them in and the, the values i have are, are milwaukee san diego and then kind of that sneaky casey baltimore thing. yep that makes sense to me all right well good luck to everybody out there tonight we hopefully will see you out there uh sheets you're not you're not around tonight right mm, it's possible Maybe. okay well hopefully we see sheets at six eastern otherwise you guys will be stuck with me and uh, let's make some money today, everybody. Good luck. Oh, wait, before I forget, yeah. um, I, I also I was going through my stacks. And don't forget the, the, my, you know, the Dodgers as well. Yes, I like that as well. Okay. All right. Good luck, everybody.